This video is another in the series for Math 1133 for UTSA. Today we're going to be talking about 13.4, area, and the definite integral. So let's say we have the graph of a function y equals x plus 1, and we want to talk about the area of the region between the graph and the x-axis on some interval. In this case, the interval from 1 to 5. Okay, so this is a trapezoid, right? So if we wanted to find this area, there's a formula. So if you know the... Uh, the this length and this length and how how tall in air quotes the trapezoid's on its side basically there's the short um side the long side and then the distance between them there's a formula right let's pretend we don't have that one thing we could do is is the following is chop this into two pieces uh there we go, that's a little bit better. And you go, oh, well, I've got a triangle on top and a rectangle on bottom. And the bottom is going to be one unit tall and four units long. For one to five would be four units, right? So that means that the area of the bottom part is four. And then the triangle has a base of four and a height of four. So base times five over two, 16 over two would be eight, right? So we have an area of eight. So the total area is actually 12, right? That's the exact area. Now this isn't very interesting because we're just we're done with no calculus. So why are we talking about this? How would we do this without using triangles, using rectangles only? Why do we care about that? Well, we'll see that soon enough. Uh, that comes later. So if I needed to use only rectangles, what would I do? Well, the one option is to say, well, um, I'll just do this rectangle here and take this as a really, really poor underestimate, right? Um, so if I only use one rectangle, right, then my, my estimate would be four units, which is off by a lot, right? So what if I want to use more rectangles? And notice that this is the tallest rectangle that fits inside the trapezoid, right? So if I wanted to double the number of rectangles, well, since we're going to have a lot of graphing here, I'm going to change the background. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So if I wanted to have two rectangles, then I would need to cut the trapezoid in half like this, fit one rectangle like this, and the other rectangle like this, right? So I'd have this rectangle here and this rectangle here. So I, I, I'm only using half of the original one, and then I've used made the other half taller, essentially, right? So this first rectangle is two units, right? It's half of the four that we had. Now, what about this one? Well, it's now three units tall. See how its um, height there on the function is at y equals three, and the base is two, so it's six, six units. Okay. So now if we use two rectangles, we get eight, which is a big improvement. It's much closer. Still off by quite a bit. Uh, we've got these big gaps where we're counting nothing. Well, let's increase the number of rectangles. So let's erase all of this. In fact, I don't need to erase all of it, just, I guess, that. Let's cut these each in half. And notice that um, I'm making sure all these rectangles fit under the graph. So we're going to be getting an underestimate. Okay. So now each of these rectangles is one unit wide, right? There's four of them, so they're, they're one unit wide each. This first one is one unit tall, so its area is one. This next one is two units tall, so its area is two. This next one is three units tall, so its area is three. And this next one is four units tall, so its area is four. So if we add all that up, we get 10. So if we use four rectangles, and notice I skipped using three rectangles, basically I'm doubling the number of rectangles every time. Then we get an estimate of 10, which is closer to the value we know that the area really is, which is which is 12. Um, at this point, I want to think about how much are we missing. These little gaps, we are missing two units. So what's the error involved? The error involved in using one rectangle, well, that'd be eight units. You're off by a lot. The error in using two rectangles, eight is an underestimate, so there is uh, error rather is four, and then if you use four rectangles, the error is two. So whenever I double the number of rectangles, I cut the error in half. I go from one rectangle to two rectangles to four rectangles. When I do that, I go from eight error to four error to two error. So you can probably guess what um, 
what area estimate we're going to get if we use eight rectangles. So let's go ahead and do that. And you probably have a suspicion as to what we're going to get. But let's go confirm that. So I'm going to cut these each in half again. Which is why you might be noticing this is why I made um, each unit mark on the x-axis two grid lines each. That way it would be easy to make half units. So these are each one half unit wide. I'm not going to worry about making these nice and neat. Call that close enough. So this one is one unit tall. It's a half unit wide. So that's a half unit of area. So 0.5, I guess. Let's change the size of the stylus. Yeah. So for the next one, it'll be a little bit easier to write. Okay. So this one is one and a half units tall. And it's a half unit wide. So that's 0.75 units. And this one is two units tall. So this is going to be one unit, okay? That's half unit wide. Uh, the next one is two and a half units tall, half unit wide, base times height, get the area of a rectangle. That's going to be 1.25. You can probably guess what the next value is going to be, the next area, right? This one is three units tall, half unit wide, so 1.5. Notice that the area goes up by a quarter point as we go. So I know I can cut the chase. This is 1.75. This one's two, and this is two and a quarter. Right, just cutting to the chase there. We go and color these in, which I guess we don't have to do, but I'm going to. And try to stay within the lines. So we're getting, if you total that up, which I will, I will actually do. I got a calculator right here. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.75 plus one plus 1.25 plus 1.5 plus 1.75 plus two plus two and a quarter. We get 11. Okay, as you may have predicted. So if we use eight rectangles. We get an area estimate of 11. So the error would be one. Every time I double the number of rectangles, I cut the error in half. So each of these little triangles, we're missing, we're missing some area there when we, when we uh, don't count these. Each little block here is a half unit by a half unit. So that would be a quarter unit. And each triangle is one half of that. So each little triangle is one eighth of a unit that we're missing. And there's eight of them. So we're missing one whole unit of area that we're not counting. What if I doubled the number of rectangles to 16? Well, I would be getting, I would be off by a half a unit, right? So I'd get 11 and a half if I went through the trouble of doing that. What if I doubled the number of rectangles to 32? Well, I'd be off by a quarter unit, so I'd get 11.75. What if I use 64 rectangles? I'd be off by one eighth of a unit or 0.125, so I'd get 11.875 and so forth. So if I increase the number of rectangles, I decrease the error in using just the rectangles and, and ignoring the little uh, bits of triangle that are missing. Okay, So I can get a very good estimate only using rectangles, no triangles, um, if I just increase the number of rectangles. You might think, well, why would you do that? Why don't we just use a triangle? Well, what if we can't use a triangle? What if I want this area? And we're going to do a couple of examples with this one. So let's say I have f of x equals 9 minus x squared. And I want to work on the interval from 0 to 2. So I'm going to put a vertical line here. And I want this area, all of this. So the top of the... Um, shape, which is no longer a trapezoid, it's not a straight line, it's a parabola. So I there's no triangle to use, and I don't have a formula from geometry for the area under a parabola. So how do I do that? Well, we can use rectangles and make an estimate. So what I can do is I can try first two rectangles. So my interval is two units wide. I'm going to make two rectangles, so it'll be one unit wide each. So it's kind of hard to see because this graph is tall. Uh, I'm going to make a cut here, and I'm going to fit one rectangle of height 8 right here, and the other rectangle of height 5 right here, okay? So this first rectangle is one unit wide and eight units tall. So its area is going to be 8. 
which I'll try to color this in at least mostly good enough. So this is eight. The other rectangle, well, this is one unit wide and five units tall. So its area is five. All right, so I get, I get 13 as an area estimate. So I get eight times one height times base. We usually do base times height, but I'm doing uh, height times base in this case. We'll, we'll see why soon enough. Plus five times one, so that equals 13. Okay, this is essentially uh, height one, and this is height two, height of rectangle one, height of rectangle two, okay? And then this is, say, uh, the width of the first one, and this is the width of the second one. What if I wanted a better estimate? Because you notice I'm missing quite a lot of area. So if I want a better estimate, let me double the number of rectangles. Let's get rid of some of this. And I will go and cut each of these in half up the middle. Oh, it doesn't want to uh, scroll. It wants to now. So right about there. And then for this one, right about there. Okay. So then I can make my four rectangles. Close enough. So this first one is going to be a little bit harder because the height is not made at a whole number. So I have to put a little bit more effort in. Okay. So the height of this one is going to be F of 0.5. Does it want to scroll down? It does not want to scroll down. Fine. So here at 0.5, that's where the height of that first rectangle is going to be. So F of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. That's the height times the base. And I'm actually going to run out of room if I don't do that. Okay. So what's next? The next rectangle. So this one has a height of 8. So that's convenient, which is really just f of 1, right? So plus f of one times 0 0.5 plus the next one this is going to be f of 1.5 times 0 0.5 plus running out of room here probably should have planned to do this from the beginning that's fine and then the last one this has a height of or in other words, f of 2. So this is f of 2 times 0 0.5. Okay, so what is f of 5? Well, I have my handy calculator here. So 9 minus 0.5 squared. So that's 8.75 times 0.5, so half of that, which we'll do in a moment. And then 8 times 0.5. 0.5 plus 9 minus 1.5 squared, so 6.75 times 0 0.5 plus 5 times 0 0.5. What you might notice is that since the widths are all the same, I really could factor out that 0 0.5 and put the 8.75 plus the 8 plus the 6.75 plus the 5 in parentheses, all that times 0.5. So I can add those up, so 8.75 plus 8 plus 6.75 plus 5, and I get 28 and a half. 28.5 times 0 0.5, so uh, that makes 14 and a quarter. So that is my estimate using four rectangles. Okay, so, well, what if I wanted a better estimate? Well, I could use eight rectangles. Now, I don't want to do this by hand. That's going to get really tedious. So I want to switch to something else and, and look at what would this look like to, to do this. Okay, so here's the same graph. Essentially, the color is different, but it's the same function, 9 minus x squared. And you'll see that I've got um, this thing that says interval. This sets up. Uh, 0 to 2 is the interval that I'm using. This I made this prior ahead of time for, for more than one purpose, so it, th those can be adjusted. 
And then the rectangles, this sets up drawing the rectangles, but we don't have to worry about that right now. So uh, right now, n equals zero, that says zero rectangles. So if I increase this to one, there's one rectangle, it's the tallest rectangle um, that on the interval from zero to two that fits inside the, the uh, parabola, okay? Uh, if I increase to two rectangles, that's the first, well, yeah, that's the first calculation we did. We didn't bother calculating with one rectangle because that's gonna be a terrible estimate anyway. So we went and did this, that's how we got 13. Uh, three rectangles, we didn't do manually. Uh, four rectangles, that's how we got the 14 and a quarter, okay? So what if I did eight rectangles? Well, it would look like that. What if I did 16 rectangles? It would look like that. And notice that we're getting these little tiny triangles. There's more of them, and they're not really triangles anymore, right? Because this, this is a parabola, not a straight line. So they're not really triangles. They just kind of look like it when you zoom in. So if I double the rectangles to uh, 32, it's going to look like that. And these little gaps are getting more numerous but smaller. Um, we can't double anymore. I've only set this up to go up to 50 rectangles. I think that, um, as I recall, the website starts having a problem if you, um, if you go above 50, it, it has difficulty. So let's just stop at 50, 50 rectangles. And down here, you can see these tiny gaps. There's 50 little gaps like this. Okay. They're all really small. And you can see that we're basically filling in the graph of the function. And if we go to the top and zoom in, you can see there's a really teeny, tiny sliver. How tall is that sliver? Well, uh, this is nine, where the y-intercept is. And down here, this, this major grid mark is nine, uh, rather 8.995. So each one of these grid marks is 0 0.001 units. So this is approximately 9.9984, I guess. So it's a very, very short little sliver, right? It's a very tiny gap. We've basically filled in the, uh, the graph of the function, right? So we can use the idea of having many rectangles regardless of the shape of the graph. So when we go back over here, um, this approach works. In this example, we didn't need this approach, just use a trapezoid, no problem. But that's just the first example. This is what where we really would want to be able to do it because then you just count up. Um, you can get an estimate with however, however many rectangles you want. But then also more rectangles gives you a better estimate. So what if I wanted to do this algebraically with more rectangles? How would I calculate? Of course, you can have a computer do it, but how does the computer do it? So I want to copy this line here and examine it a little bit. I accidentally got cut the G there as well. Let's get rid of that. Um, this guy here, this was F of what we're going to call X1. It's the first X coordinate I refer to, 0 0.5, in, you know, when making the, the graph. It's where the, the, the first rectangle makes its altitude. The height of the graph is made to match the function, right? At uh, 0.5 comma, what was that? 8.75, right? Okay, so that times the width that they all have plus f of x2 times the width that they all have plus f of x3 times the width that they all have plus f of x4 times the width that they all have. Now, w is not the symbol that's typically used for this. We're going from one x coordinate to the next. We're incrementing slowly through the interval 0, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2. Or if we had more rectangles, therefore a narrower width, we would have maybe 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. If we had 20 rectangles, for example, right? So the, the symbol that's typically used for this is delta x. So let's use that here. So if I wanted to have many rectangles, I could say, well, my area estimate, this is going to be f of x1 times delta x plus f of x2 times delta x plus dot, 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 f of xn. If I have n rectangles, Right? And it could be 10 or 100 or 1,000 or whatever. The last rectangle would have its height 
at f of whatever that x coordinate would be, okay, times delta x. And then I can factor out the delta x and say, well, I really have f of x1 plus f of x2. And this is getting really abstract, and I know this is, you. maybe your, your brain is overheating a bit. Uh, don't worry, we're, we're soon going to cut details and say, okay, yeah, shine, fine, but but what do we what do we do with this? We don't need to have all of the details. So dot 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 plus f of x n. So you basically add up all the heights and multiply by the width that all the rectangles share. And you can have a computer do this for you, of course. Uh, but there is a way to do this by hand without a calculator, without a computer. Um, we'll get to that. That's actually the topic for uh, thirteen point. Um, five, the next section. So we'll defer manually calculating, but I'm going to give you the notation. Basically, this is something you may have seen before. This can be rewritten as the sum. This is called sigma notation. It's the capital Greek letter sigma. This means add up the same thing repeatedly, okay? As i goes from 1 to n of f of x i times delta x. So this is the height of the ith um, rectangle, and this is the width of all the rectangles. So you're doing height times width, height times width, height times width. This says add up all of them. The Greek letter sigma is used because of the word sum, sigma sum, right? This is just notation. You don't need to worry about this. The mechanics of this are something that in Cal 1, a lot of time is spent on so that you make the, the, the connection very clear as to the thing that we're going to do in 13.5 that we're just going to cut to the chase and just do it and not worry about all the details. In Cal 1, we need all the details because in Cal 2, you utilize the details. For this class, you guys probably aren't, even if your major is econ or finance, you're probably not going to utilize the details for a later course so we can skip them. But this is the point where I'm going to say, all right, let's 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 back out of the weeds at this point. Going back to um, that graph, if you have fewer rectangles, you have a poor estimate. More rectangles is a better estimate. So how would we calculate the exact area? How would we get all of it and not have any, any little gaps? I don't want any gaps. I want to use more rectangles and not have gaps. How would I do that? Um, and you might be thinking, oh, well, we would just do this. And it's something we haven't done in a while. Basically, we're going to use a limit. So the actual area, so the area uh, exact, I guess I'll call it that. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of xi delta x. This is what's called a Riemann sum. You don't really need to know that, but that's the name. And in Cal 1, quite a bit of time is spent on this. The notation for this is the following. For, for this example, we're using the interval 0 to 2. Uh, more generally, you would say the interval is from A to B. So this is the integral from A to B. Again, in our case, the numbers would be 0 and 2. A would be 0, B would be 2, of f of x dx. Okay. The f of x is the function value. It's what makes the heights of the rectangles. dx is the incremental width. This is the differential that we talked about previously. The incremental width is representative of the, uh, the width that we use to build the Riemann sum. It's the width of each rectangle. It's, it's, it's like a placeholder that says, no, no, that width is there. Um, that's its role, basically. It's the width of each rectangle. So this is the notation that says we're going to find the exact area. Now, how do we do that? Well. If I go back over here, this guy, I can zoom out. Remember, there are our two estimates were 13 uh, and then 14 and a quarter. I can go type over here int, okay, and it gives me the, the stretched S symbol. I put zero at the bottom, two at the top, and go type in f of x. I don't, it's already defined in the first line. I don't have to retype out 9 minus x squared dx, and I get 15.3333 repeating. Okay, so 15 and a third, essentially. That's the exact area. Now, the uh, Desmos 
may be doing this purely numerically, like it'll do it with a million rectangles. Um, it may be doing it symbolically, like it has some formulas programmed into it. And so when you give it 9 minus x squared, it just uses a formula. It doesn't do rectangles. Um, there are There is software that will do rectangles for you if you want it to, but let's not bother with that. So you can use, if a, if a homework problem tells you to use a calculator, just use Desmos and that'll work fine. So I can go back over to here and say, okay, well, this area, the area, the integral, in fact, let's do it, um, let's do it here. The integral from zero to two of nine minus x squared dx equals, so 15 and one third would be what, 46 thirds? 46 thirds, I believe that's correct. So that is the exact area under the parabola, not no gaps, counting everything. So all of this is exactly 46 over three. No, no error at all involved. That's the exact amount. Now, as I said, the computer might be doing it numerically. Um, I suspect not that Desmos probably has a formula. I went outside the lines a little bit. I suspect Desmos does have a formula that will do this. It, it, it probably does not do a, you know, a million or a billion rectangles. Um, so in the next section, 13.5, we'll look at, okay, well, what, what would that formula be? How would you do that? Um, and as I've referred to already in Cal 1, we go through all those details. For this course, we're going to skip those details. Um, but this is mainly conceptual. If, sorry, I'm zooming in and out a bunch of times. Um, if you get this concept, but that kind of makes sense. You use rectangles to, to underestimate the area. Um, and then you use a lot of rectangles to, to catch all the missing gaps. And you could have a computer use a billion rectangles, and that will be very, very close. But then there is some method we'll use later to get the exact value. If that all kind of makes sense, and you get it conceptually, then that's fine. Like If you got lost in the numbers and, and the, the subscripts and the I's and the N's, don't worry about that. If what I just said a moment ago kind of makes sense, then you're good. Um, one thing I do want to look at real quick before we switch away from this is um, here in these rectangles, these were all underestimates. So I can switch this to being all overestimates, okay? So all these rectangles are, are larger, right? Than they, the, the parabola, they fit above the parabola. They, they, they encompass the parabola, right? And, if I, and so I have all these extra bits, these extra little pieces. They're not triangles, but they, they come above the graph. So they're, I'm getting an overestimate. And then as I increase the number of rectangles, those little extra bits that are too much decrease, okay? So you can either do an overestimate or an underestimate, and then uh, as long as you increase the number of rectangles, you can calculate the exact area that way. All right, what's the next example? So suppose the marginal cost of making x widgets is m of x equals x minus 600 squared all over 450, okay? And we're going to estimate the cost for widgets 101 to 150, okay? So if I plug in like 10, this does not give me the cost to make 10 widgets. It gives me the marginal cost. So it gives me the, the cost to make widget number 11. So M of 10, let's change colors here. M of 10, what would that be? Uh, 590 squared over 450, I guess. So 773 and change. This is the cost to make widget number 11. Okay. Now I want to estimate the cost for widgets 101 to 150, all of them, not just uh, one or two of them. So if I look at M of 100, that's cost for number 101. Okay. If I look at M, 101, that's the cost for number 102, all right? If I do M of 102, that's the cost for number 103. I'm going to cut the chase a little bit, dot, dot, dot. If I do M of, say, 148, that's the cost for number 149. And if I do M of 149, that's the cost of number 150, okay? So if I want to add all these up, I'm adding up a bunch of, 
amounts, a bunch of function values. One way to think about it is I've got the, uh, the, fun the marginal function, and I'll just sketch it really roughly. I'm not going to try to make it too accurate. It's something like, there you go, that's pretty good. Okay, so it's something like that. Basically, I've got, say, here's 100, and here's 149. I could add up all the little rectangles here. And this first rectangle, this is going to be, it's one unit wide. This is going to be M of 100. And the next little rectangle will be M of 101. The next rectangle, rectangle is M of 102. So I want to add up all these rectangles. Well, that's the definite integral. I'm getting the area under the graph of the marginal function. So if I add all these up, this is going to be the integral from 100 to 149. We could go to 150 and just call that ah, rounding error. Don't worry about it because you'll notice that these values get smaller. Um, let's just go to 149 for this example of that marginal cost function and get a computer to give us an estimate and we'll get a number that way. So let's switch over to here. There's the uh, function, you know, there's the graph. It bottoms out at 600. And here's highlighted the section from 100 to 149. So I can calculate that area or estimate that area. So if I go over here, type in int and do 100 on bottom and 149 on top, and then type in m of x dx, it gives me 24,641.59. Let's run to two places. That's good enough. So this calculation is this blue area here. And that's an estimate of, well, what's the marginal cost for uh, starting with the, the widget 101 and going up to widget 50. Or sorry, 150, I mean to say. So yeah, that's um, that's an estimate for that. And you could go up to 150 and just call that, you know, close enough. In fact, if I wanted to do that, go back over here. Remember, it's 24,641. And I could change uh, this to 150. And it's, you know, a little bit higher, but not that that different. But let's let's go with 149. Anyway, so that's that's just an example of what you can do with an integral. The definite integral gives you the area under a function, which is basically you're adding up function values. You're totaling something. Um, again, this is why the stretched s symbol is used because you're summing, right? Anyway, um, for now we don't have a way to do this by hand. That's actually the next section. Uh, so the homework problems will all be conceptual or it'll ask you to use a calculator or a computer to do it. And you can use Desmos to do that. And yeah, that's basically it. If that all made sense, then you should be in good shape for the next section where we actually get to, okay, how do you do this by hand without a calculator? Or in other words, how does the calculator do it without using rectangles? What's, what's the formula that the computer uses?